to Professor Crisheli Katz, um, who's going to present on the gender price gap. Okay. Um, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Great. So thank you very much. I'm very happy to be here. And what I'm going to talk about today is women and men in product markets, but I'm actually going to talk about the a product, product platform and market of eBay. And it's a joint project with uh, Tali Regev. So we know um, a lot about what happens to women and men in the labor force. We know, for example, that women tend to earn lower wages than men do. We know that women tend to be hired less and promoted less compared to men. But we know relatively little about what happens with women and men in product markets. And this is what I'm going to try to describe for you today. And I'm going to focus on the uh, market platform of eBay. Uh, and I'm basically, basically going to try and answer two different questions. And let me just say that I'm going to use the gender price gap as an example for the ways in which um, uh, discrimination operates in product markets and specifically in online um, product markets. And the other thing I want to say is that I'm going to try and highlight how, how platforms affect uh, final prices. But if, um, if, if, I, if uh, questions remain, I, I am very happy to talk about this at the end of my presentation. So I'm going to try to talk about two different questions. One question would be, uh, do women and men behave differently as sellers and buyers on eBay? And the second question, which I think is the more interesting one, is are women and men sellers treated differently by buyers on eBay? So do women and men get different prices for selling the exact same product on eBay um, or do they get different prices for selling the exact same product? Uh, in terms of the empirical strategy, the project I'm going to describe to, to you has two parts. In the first part, we selected, um, we got access to real eBay data and we uh, actually got data for um, three years of transactions on eBay. We got data to all the transactions, but we selected 420 best-selling products on eBay. So eBay categorizes the products that are selling online. And we made sure that we had enough products in each and every category that eBay has in the platform. And the idea was to make sure that we're not focusing merely on a seemingly feminine products or seemingly masculine products. We wanted to make sure that we have products that belong to each and every category that eBay has, and we selected 420 best-selling products. So that these are the products that are sold the most in the platform. We identified for each and every user the gender of the person who is, um, who is selling the product. The way we did it was actually a, a combined, it involved a combined strategy. We first looked at, we didn't look, but we asked eBay for the gender of the users according to their to their own reports. So some of the users uh, reported the gender when they sign in, sign in, and we looked at the reported gender. But we also looked or asked eBay to look at the first and last names, mostly first names of the people uh, who are members. And we used the census dictionary of names to identify the gender of users. Um, and we compared the reported gender to the gender that emerged from the first, and first names of users. And we realized that both strategies were pretty accurate. And then we extracted data on the transactions themselves. So, so for each and every transaction on eBay, we know the type of product, the price of the product, the time of the auction, the condition of the product, the, some data about the seller. So is it a he or a she, the reputation of the seller, the experience, so the amount of time she has been a member on eBay, the state in which she lives, et cetera. And then we have some data about the buyers themselves. Let me just say that the study I'm going to describe to you now is a study that is focused on, um, on the US in the sense that all the sellers and buyers live in the US. And the other thing I want to mention is that the study focuses on private sellers on eBay. So on eBay, one option is to be one option that members have is to open a shop or store on eBay, and then you uh, negotiate as a store or you sell products as a store. We do not include them in the data because we wanted to, to look at the ways in which people interact with each other online and stores are a little different. So they're excluded from our data set. Okay, so as for the First question, do women and men behave differently as sellers and buyers on eBay? What you see here is 
actually our data set. And you see that we have data for the years 2009 and 2012 by gender. And let me just say that we have the data for the four, for all the auctions and for the 420 best selling products on eBay, but these are only auctions. And I'll say that we also had data for other um, platforms. eBay has a negotiation platform and also a, a, a buy now platform in which people are just price takers. But what you see here is only the auctions. The reason I'm focusing on auctions for this presentation is because in auctions, people do not negotiate with one another. So once I decide to put my iPhone in, on, in an auction, uh, I'm not participating in the auction. Uh, so I'm, I'm only starting with a start price, but then I have to sell my item at the end of the auction to the person uh, who decides to pay uh, the most in the auction, which means that I'm not negoti negotiating. So any differences between men and women in negotiation patterns are irrelevant when this is an auction and not a negotiation. Uh, let me also say that auctions in eBay are second price auctions, which means that the person um, who wins is the person with the highest bid, but she pays the second uh, highest bid. Uh, and this, is, this strategy is aimed uh, to make people a bid on their actual willingness to pay. So what do we see in the data? What we see here is just the data. So we see that on average women and men receive different prices for the products they sell on eBay. On average, women receive about $101 and men about $136. And this is maybe perhaps interesting, but not, it's only a beginning in the sense that women and men may be selling very different products on eBay. And therefore this may be an indicator for the fact that men and women just tend to sell different products. You can also note that men and women have different, slightly different reputations on eBay. And on average, women are evaluated as slightly better at describing the products that are selling. So at the end of, trans at the, end of the transaction, eBay would email the buyer and the seller and ask them to rate one another. And on average, people tend to rate women sellers as being um, better at describing the products that they're selling. And also, um, and that's it. Uh, I, I should also add that men and women differ in their starting prices in the sense that in auctions, women's starting prices tend to be lower compared to, man, compared to men's. So we see that the start price for women is about $40 and the start price for, for men is about $47. But this can also be a result of the fact that men and women are selling different prices uh, on eBay. And one last thing I'll say is that women tend to have shorter experience on eBay in the sense that women in terms of so if you see the variable years in eBay, you'll see that men, that the men we capture in our data set tend to have about 9.8 years of experience on eBay, whereas the women have only nine years on average. Okay. So still with the descriptive statistics, let me just say that women constitute about one quarter of all private sellers on eBay. So we have more men in these um, auctions than women. Women have shorter experience, but better reputation than men. Women prefer not to negate, negotiate. How do we know that? Well, you don't know that, but I know that because I looked at the data and I saw that when women choose platforms, they, ch they tend to choose negotiation, the option to negotiate less than men do. Women have a higher willingness to pay to insure against low auction outcomes. So eBay provides sellers an option to insure um, the final prices of the auction and women tend to be to do it slightly more than men do. I'll also say that both men and women tend not to do it, but on average women tend to do it a little more. Women buyers prefer to buy products for women, from women, so this is a result of a regression model. And, and also women buyers pay higher prices for same products. So I'll talk about this a little more soon. So now to the second and more interesting question, are women and men sellers treated differently by buyers on eBay? So here, what I'm going to describe to you is the results of a regression analysis in which we're comparing not only men and women, but rather men and women who sell the exact same product on the exact same day, and the seller has the exact same reputation, and the length of the auction is the exact same length, and the state of the seller is the exact same state, etc. So we're, we're holding in our regression models all the, all the variables that we have constant. 
And let me remind you that the reason we're using auctions is, but is because on auctions, when we have men and women selling products, they're not negotiating with potential buyers. And let me also say that when I say a product, what I mean is, a, so eBay has a very concrete definition of a product in the sense that the product might be an iPod shuffle second generation blue. So it's a very concrete definition, eBay. So when I say the exact same products, I actually mean the exact same products and products on eBay can be either new or used. When products are used, there is some uncertainty regarding the quality of the product and the condition of the product. But, but when products are used, I'm sorry, there is some uncertainty regarding the quality of the product and, uh, and the condition of the product. But when products are new, they're new, new in the box in the sense that they're new and no one has used them in the, product, in the past. So we analyzed the outcomes of about 600,000 auctions of best-selling products on eBay between the years 2009 and 2012. All the, all the sellers and buyers are Americans in our data set. And what we find is that women sellers get fewer bids and lower prices. And women receive on average about 20% less for new products. So when women and men sell the exact same product on eBay and everything else is held constant in the sense is that it, that in the sense that it's the, the state is controlled for the length of the auction, the experience of the seller, the reputation of the seller, women receive about 20% less for the same identical new product. But when women and men sell used products, the gap narrows and women receive about 3% less for the same used product. And women buyers also pay more when they're buying products compared to men. So when women and men buy the exact same product, women pay about 3% more compared to men and I'll just remind you that these are all findings from auctions. So when women buy products on auctions and they're buying the exact same products and everything else is held constant, they pay about 3% more. Okay. What you see here is just their regression models. And what I want to focus now on is just one product. And this is the, this gift card or the Amazon gift card, but actually gift cards in general. And let me just say that gift cards are interesting because when I'm buying a gift card, I'm actually almost buying a money in the sense that I should know exactly what a product is worth to me. So on average in the data set, women selling money value gift cards obtain about 7% less than men sellers. And when gift cards are otherwise identical in terms of the venue, etc. Okay, and then uh, we were a little worried that perhaps something else is affecting the results we obtain. So we were worried that men and women were describing the um, products that they were selling on eBay differently in the sense that men and women were using different ads to describe the products that they were selling and these different ads were generating the effects we found. So what we did is we used um, a sentiment analysis software. The name of the software is uh, Symmetria. And what it does is that it codes pieces of text by the, uh, by the sentiments that appear in the text. And what we found was that women and men were indeed using different sentiments in the text of the ads of the products they were selling. Women tended to use more um, positive sentiments and men tended to use more negative sentiments, but these differences in the tendency to use sentiments did not generate the results. So even when we control for the sentiments that appear in the ad uh, in our regression models, and uh, we find that effect, the effects remain. So women are still receiving about 20% less for selling the exact same new product. And what you see here is just how the software works. And maybe I did not emphasize it, but what we did was to actually use the software on each and every text of the ad, of, ad, of, of an ad that we had in our data set. Okay. And then and we wanted to make sure that people were actually um, correctly sex categorizing sellers on eBay. Uh, let me put it another way. eBay would not directly tell you that you're negotiating, nego negotiating or buying from a woman 
uh, or a man. And we, were, we wondered whether people were actually um, knowing the gender of sellers by using the platform. Uh, and in a way, the reason we thought that they weren't doing so was because we knew from studies about um, real world interactions that gender was a um, primary category of difference in the sense that people tend to use gender and categorize by gender automatically and unconsciously in each and every interactions they have. So we knew from data about what happens to people in real world interactions that we always sex categorize one another and we assume that there should that that this should be happening online as well, but we wanted to make sure that this was happening. So let me just show you how or why we think um, how we think this operates. So this is just an example for a um, membership page uh, of a person we have in the data. And as you see, his username is Jimmy something, and he uses a photo of a car. And then these are the them products that Jimmy is selling. And if you had to guess, you would say Jimmy was a he and not a she. And you would probably unconsciously guess that. And you would be correct in the case of Jimmy. And here is another example. But we wanted to move beyond anecdotal evidence. And so we ran an experiment in which we used um, uh, members that were in our data set. And we knew whether they were describing themselves as a he or a she, but we actually asked participants in an experiment on Amazon Mechanical Turk to sex categorize members. So we randomly choose um, members from our data set. We knew their gender, but we gave a participant in an experiment a chance to sex categorize them by how their membership page looked like at the day of the experiment. And we wanted to see whether people actually correctly sex categorize one another when asked to. And what we found was, we found two interesting things. One, that people do, uh, that people manage to accurately sex categorize others, but also that the more items a, a person is selling, the easier it is to sex categorize her. So if Mary here was selling only her shoes, people would perhaps categorize her as a she, but the more items she's selling, so here she's selling three uh, pairs of sandals and then two bags, the more items she's selling, the more accurate her sex categorization by others in the experiment is. Okay. And then uh, we, we were not 100% sure that there was nothing else that is happening the data and that is affecting our results. In other words, we were still worried about causation and we were worried that we were finding correlations but not causation yet. So we decided to add an experiment to the study in which we took the same, um, we took the um, idea of using a money value gift card and we were trying to see how people respond in an experiment, in a controlled uh, lab experiment uh, to whether the person that is selling the gift card is a man or a woman. So the experiment was actually pretty straightforward. Participants were told either that Allison was selling this gift card or that Brad was selling this gift card, this Amazon $100 gift card. And let me, let me just say that gift cards are not only money value gift cards in the sense that people should know how much they're worth to them, but also that this concrete example of an Amazon gift card is a relatively gender neutral uh, example. And what we found was that when Ellison was selling the gift card, people were willing to pay her about $83 for the gift card. But when Brad was selling the exact same gift card, people were willing to pay him about $87. And this difference between um, Ellison and Brad is actually very similar to the difference we found in the original data set. So that made us think that perhaps we were closer to causation than we thought, that it was beyond correlation and, and maybe there, there is proof for causation. Let me just add a few more things and tell you that although I described a gap of about 20% between women and men for selling the exact same a new product, an interesting pattern that appeared in the data was that um, gaps tended to vary by products. So for some products in the data, gap between women and men were bigger than 20%, naturally. And for others, 
uh, gaps were much smaller. And in some particular products, there were no gaps at all in favor of men compared to women. And we thought that maybe this is an interesting uh, beginning for a new study in the sense that maybe we can learn something about the mechanism if we try to figure out what it is in the products that generate differences. So in other words, we wanted to see why is it the case that for some products, gaps are much bigger than for other products and what, what makes some products more susceptible to discrimination than others. And let me just say that what we did was to run a second study in which we asked participants in a study a long list of questions about the products that appear in our data set. So how feminine do you think the product is? And how certain are you about the price of the product? Um, what are the traits that are so associated with the product owner? And then we had this information for each and every product in the data, and we combined it with the data about the gender gap, and we tried to understand what was happening. I know that I don't have a lot of time, so let me just tell you that when we combine the data, the new data set with the old data set, what we find is that women tend to be penalized more for selling similarly masculine compared to feminine mm. products. So when women, for example, are trying to sell um, uh, drills, they are penalized more than when they're trying to sell sewing machines, right? So gaps are bigger when products are perceived to be similarly masculine compared to similarly feminine. Gaps are also bigger when uncertainty is greater. So when people know less about the value or the price of the product, women tend to be penalized more. And that, I guess, speaks to the literature about stereotypes and when we use them. And then, okay, you know what? Let me stop here and say, um, let me just stop here. Thank you.